Hey, uh, good morning. It's Tim here. I'm just giving you a quick update on Irma. So let's uh, just jump right in and check that out. Right now we're uh, seeing a little bit of a westward drift on the storm. Let me zoom, zoom in on this and uh, get a better look. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, we're moving uh, pretty much uh, due west. And what we're seeing here in the models uh, this morning, let me switch over to this. And uh, what you're seeing here is the zero Z models from last night, about uh, seven o'clock central. And this yellow dot here, this is the actual observed position of Irma as of about uh, 30 minutes ago. Now this top line up here, this is the GFS track. The thin line is the control run. And uh, the line down here at the bottom, that's the European HRES, uh, the high resolution model. So actually both of these are the high resolution models, the uh, thick lines. And what you notice here is that there is a disagreement between the two models. We have the European model taking the system more up into the Cape Coral area, southwestern Florida, and the GFS sticking with the original track towards the Miami area. Now with this uh, westward drift, it looks like we're kind of locking onto the European solution here. So there is a possibility that we may see this continue drifting westward towards Cuba, and some of the land interactions would uh, cause a little bit of weakening with the storm as it passes over that. Now, we're not going to know for sure exactly what's going to happen here until later today by uh, about 6 o'clock. The uh, Irma is going to be located right in this area here, so we're going to have a pretty good idea what our outcome is going to be by the time it gets out there. You can see there's a about a 40-mile discrepancy between the GFS and the European model, and as I've mentioned, it looks like we're kind of going a little bit further south with this. Now the ensembles are looking like this. This is the uh, GFS, and I, we're looking at the uh, lower resolution ensembles, and uh, they do seem to be performing pretty well as the control run is following the high resolution run uh, pretty closely. And what I've done is I've weeded out the uh, 10 models, the 10 ensemble members that are not verifying very well. And what we're getting here is a pretty wide spread. So we've only got about maybe four of them, keeping it in the Miami area, and we've got about five or six taking it further west, similar to what the European model had indicated. I'm taking a look here at the uh, chat. Uh, your view is not showing. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. Here's the, the uh, European model. Let me scroll down and uh, bring this up here. Can't really uh, move that window up any further, but in any case, all of the models, all of the good ensemble members are pretty much to the south of the actual location. Maybe I can zoom this in. Let me do that real quick. There we go. It's hard to find any European ensembles that are going north of the actual location. Very strong southward pull in the European run, bringing it towards the Cuban coast like you see here. And looking at the clustering of the ensemble members for the European model, we've got it pretty firmly heading up into the southwest Florida area. So we're talking about, uh, looks like uh, just 
east of uh, Key West and then right up into the Coral Springs area. So, which one we're looking at? Uh, I'm not really too sure. We're just going to have to see how things play out for the rest of today. And I think if we do get that westward drift continuing, then we will bring that more up into southwest Florida and a little bit further away from Miami. However, even with this track as it's showing here, Miami would be about... Uh, 60 miles away from the center, which is just on the edge of the eye wall. So there's still a pretty significant risk of a storm surge. And even if we do fall in the middle here, the uh, storm surge would be devastating in uh, the Homestead area. This is kind of what the uh, storm surge looks like. And uh, the worst storm surge appears to occur with a 15-knot forward speed. And that's about what the speed of Irma is as it makes landfall. So we're really hoping that we do get an, a westward shift on this track because otherwise the flooding will be devastating in that part of Miami. Let me bring up the inundation maps here. And this gives you some idea of the flooding. This is the old Homestead Air Force Base right there. And we can see that that's about three to six feet underwater. And extensive flooding would be coming up into the Homestead area, assuming we do get that uh, easterly track there. Also extensive flooding up into the southern Miami area. A lot of uh, neighborhoods would be affected there. And then a little bit less of a flooding problem in the Miami area, mostly in localized areas there. So the main impact would be around the Biscayne Bay area, especially as you get into the Homestead area problems in that region. So that's about uh, all I can tell at this point, and we'll just have to see how things play out for the rest of today. And I think by this evening, we'll have a very good idea of the track. So. Hopefully you can join us at 8 o'clock and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, hurricane and see what we're going to be looking at uh, landfall. The landfall is going to be Sunday morning, possibly before dawn, but most likely right around 7 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. And we'll be covering that. So anyway, uh, thank you all for joining, and uh, we will see you later today.